Hey everyone, welcome back to Living in Athens with Adam and Nicole. As usual, we thank you for stopping by to learn more about Athens and the surrounding area. Both everything from nightlife to work to real estate. And as usual, if you're looking to make a move here, we would love to help you any way that we can. Our information is listed below, so please hit subscribe, like, follow, and we would love to hear from you. We have a new episode coming up that we're excited to kick off with. And we will jump into that right now. All right, so like I said, we are starting a new little thing here. It's a series called Java with John. This is John Brantley. He is here local with us in the, actually we are both in Oconee, but Athens, essentially, we're just a few miles out, as y'all know. But he plays a vital role in real estate, but not in regards to being an agent. He's on the lending side, and he's been in Athens for since 1983. Four, a little, little shy of 40 years yeah, now. Just that so not only does he have a good idea of real estate, he has a lot of knowledge on Athens itself. So I wanted to bring him on. Weekly, bi-weekly, we will see what happens with scheduling and how much info we have. But hopefully he will provide everyone with some good knowledge on the lending side. In the future, today is a get to know John, why he loves Athens, why he's been here for four years. So with that, I will turn it over to John Brantley with the, what made you fall in love with Athens? How did you get here? Who is John? Why are you still here? <laughs> How long are here? Well, it all started, there'll be a common name of people that are familiar with a lot of Georgia and Georgia athletics, a guy named Vince Dewey. He recruited me out of the state of Florida. I was very uncertain about Georgia, didn't know much about Georgia, but when I came up to Athens, I absolutely fell in love with Athens. And it came down between Florida State and Georgia. And Georgia won out on one of my uh, official recruiting trips. I, it snowed. I've never seen snow in Florida. So the rest is history. I fell in love with the city. The people were just different. It's a small town feel, even though you have everything from the big city. You have a lot of the different variations from the university, the fine arts, the music, the outdoors, for the outdoors enthusiasts, hunting, fishing, then you know, all the athletics over at the university that provides as well for game day excitement. So there's a wide variety to like, and uh, you're not very far from other places, the mountains. You can be in the mountains in a short time, you can be at the beach in a relatively short time. So all of those things appealed to me, and I just knew once I got through with the ball, this is where I was going to stay. I don't know if any of y'all noticed, he, on his own, mentioned a lot of things that we have mentioned is a plus to being an athlete. All of the, the music scene is amazing, first off, if you're a music lover. The Georgia Athletics, so, I mean, it is a college town, so come summertime, it's a different feel than football time that is a week away. Is it next uh, week? I think we're nine days out. Nine days out. Game day. Yeah. So, but not here, it'll be in the Atlanta. The, the first one's in Atlanta versus Oregon. Yes. Yeah. Oregon Ducks. Yes. Yeah. He's more of the UGA football expert as he played football for UGA. But the being the centrally located is huge. I know we've had a lot of people contact us about jobs, warehousing, a lot of that in Athens. You can get to highways, Atlanta, lakes, mountains, typically within 45 minutes of Athens. Exactly. And depending on how far you want to go in the mountains, you know, you can go up into the whitewater rafting within just a little over, over an hour. On the Broad River, you can be there in less than 30 minutes for kayaking, tubing. So you have you have trails, you have bike trails, you have, for the outdoor enthusiasts, there's a lot of great parks around here in Athens and Oconee County that people can do a lot of outdoor activities. So it's just getting out and seeing everything. There's a lot of, uh, you know, you're not far from the wine trails of Georgia mm -hmm. as well. They have some of your locals in Oconee County and Clark County have some of the local farms where you go out and pick your own blueberries, pumpkins, strawberries, things like that. So there's a, a rural feel, a small town feel, but a big city enough that, uh, especially on game days, you'll know it feels like a big city. So. <laughs> Which y'all will be a witness here too soon. Obviously, like we said, the first one is not in Athens, but that first home game, we obviously will be doing a video of it to show you what game day in Athens is. It is a transformation of a town for, I'll call it 36 hours, because the night before people are coming in, right. 
day after people are still hanging around. So it's fun. And depending on the opponent, it could be a little longer. <laughs> Very true. Very and, true. Uh, a little more crowded. There, there have been times where there's been just as many fans that would occupy the amount of the stadium, another 100,000 that are in downtown while uh, almost 100,000 are in the stadium. So it can get very interesting. I, I will be honest, I don't go into many UGA games. I tend to spend most at the tailgate. Right. <laughs> or it's not so, but even walking around downtown, that's how it is. In these 40, almost 40 years you've been here, has it grown much in size? I mean, because it's still relatively small. Like the, the city itself is going through some growth now, actually. There's a lot of building going on downtown. Right. But I mean, outside of what's currently going on, has it really, like the downtown area, has it truly really expanded? The landscape it... has changed a lot. And again, as far as the expansion part, you know, you can only go out so far wide. So it's gone up. So the skyline has changed a lot. There okay. wasn't. There wasn't very many buildings other than the Bank of America building that was you know, over three stories. And now you have several of those with the student housing and more of that coming in. Just because you got to go up, you can't go out. The, you know, the difference is that the only route from Atlanta to Athens back in that time was Highway 29, where you had to come through Winder, all those small towns to get here, or you had to come up through 78 from Stone Mountain. So that was it, and Highway 316 wasn't here for that direct corridor. It was it was in progress. It was a work in progress. It was a work in progress, <laughs> and it still is. Uh, and eventually, everything will be connected, uh, like a, one big city, mm -hmm. probably, because we see the growth. The but the east side has grown a lot more. Some of the places where Walmart is located now, out in that area, there was you were out in the country. You know, those, those were cow pastures. There was some little establishments out there that people would uh, frequent. It's grown a lot. It's changed. The student body, you know, as well, I would say it's probably, I don't know if it's double of what it was when I was here, but it's definitely 50 to 60% greater as well. So that volume really kicks in when they, they show up on the That's, we, we know when the students arrive. That is true. I just, not too many videos ago, I just did. This is what downtown Athens looked like when the students are gone. Right. Because I, I did a video of, this is what it looks like when class is full in session. Right. right. I mean, it looks like a ghost town. It really right. does. Right. But then when you throw in 40,000 students or 40, something. 40, 50,000. 40, 50,000 yeah. students. Right. That's, yeah. it's a noticeable impact on the town, for right. sure. Right. And, and yeah, smaller area for a bunch of kids that don't have a lot of driving experience that get to frequent the downtown area. And especially on these Athens streets that yes. seem to want to be very narrow. Yes. Luckily, they're, they seem to be doing some work on these downtown streets right now, but it won't do a number on your car. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, with the students, they do not look both ways before they cross the road. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that a lot of people have to get used to. Yeah, them looking at their phones and just walking. Right. So you got to be dodging students in your car. Right. Because that's where they live now. That's right. That's right. They will, some of them will be eating, putting on their makeup and talking on the phone <laughs> while they're trying to get through that traffic. So exactly. I, I've seen all that in the past. So it's just something you got to get used to and learn to adapt. Hopefully nobody gets hurt. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's definitely been fun watching, you know, 60 students standing at a bus stop all just looking straight down. Yeah. At the phone. Not talking to each other. Right. That could be. So outside of that, the growth. Uh, there's more coming. To my understanding, there's going to be a sports arena downtown as well. So that's going to be for like concerts, venues. You know, there may be other stuff like uh, rodeos or gymnastics meets. I don't know all what they're planning on doing, but it's a sports arena that's over there by the Civic Center. Okay. Isn't there a place that they do rodeos now? Isn't it down off? No, they, they used to do it. Here's, well, here's one of the changes as far as growth. Where the Coliseum is now, before they converted that into a lot of the office space for mm -hmm. the coaches. That used to be uh, where they would house the livestock and they would bring it into the Coliseum. And then it was pretty it was pretty interesting when we'd go to practice, you'd come by and everything, that was where our weight room used to be and our facilities were in the Coliseum. <laughs> so until they added the Butts Mayor building, a lot of change in the athletic grounds. So that has given it all a new look too. So, yes, it's down Millage, I want to say. At the, 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 almost at the end of that area. Yes, or right in that area okay. is where it is. There's a barn out there with the, from the Ag School has some of their facilities out there. 
That's what they do the rodeo now. That, I've been caught out there unaware is that rodeos still occur yes. in 2022. That's true. <laughs> and a lot of people enjoy them. So. Yes. They are still popular in this part of the world, more popular uh, Midwest, out west, but there are still cowboys that are in true. this area. That is true. So we're talking about Athens has obviously grown over 40 years. Right. Um, and there's still plenty of growth. I know that there's some big names nearby for work purposes. It's Caterpillar. I think Amazon's got a warehouse nearby. Well, you have two hospitals, St. Mary's, Piedmont. Then you have the university, Caterpillar. There are several places just on the outskirts of Athens, you know, within 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. That may be in Royston, Elberton, Danielsville. Commerce, those are all short drives that where you have a lot of people, a lot of growth is happening. Big plants and things like that are going in. And so we're seeing that, and you're, you're seeing the demand where people want to live here. Uh, it's a great place to retire. Mm -hmm. This several times has been named one of the best places to retire just because of you have the two hospitals, then you also have the university, a lot of things for people to do. And there's just a lot, a lot of outdoor, a lot stuff. outdoor yeah. stuff to do, a lot of activities, a lot of just great food. It's, like, it's a good vibe. Yeah. It, it's a fun town. It is. You, you can get lost well, I mean, in yeah. Athens. Well, you can. And then in the spring, there's something that uh, people don't realize. A lot of this thing called Twilight. I was like, what is that? They, they had to be bike race downtown, all these bicycles. And it was just, they shut down pretty much all of downtown. And it's, uh, it's always a great venue. Yeah. It does. And, and I always get the reminders that it's coming but since i've never gone to watch it like i always forget about it until for some reason that's always the day i need to go to downtown athens right. or something and right. you know why are all these roads shut down right and there's also another race is there a foot race that occurs with that because if maybe there's two separate things i always get caught on some always get caught in races where they're shutting downtown but i also before we cut this short wanted john to touch a little bit on his mortgage background um, i know he's been doing it for a while who's currently with we will provide his contact information at the end of the video. It will be, I'm sure, at the bottom of his email address, name again for y'all, how to get in touch with them. But with that, how long have you been in lending mortgage game? I started in the residential mortgage in 1998. So I've seen a lot of things happen, seen a lot of things change, worked with a mortgage company. And there's differences between a mortgage company versus a broker versus a a bank itself with the mortgage division. I currently work with the United Trust Bank. We are a federal charter bank, so I get to do business in all 50 states. I don't have to be licensed in every single state like I used to. The fortunate thing with us, we offer the, everything from the residential lending side, all the normal products, your conventional FHA, VA, USDA type loans. We also do construction perm loans. We also do bridge loans. We do equity lines, uh, commercial loans. So a, a lot of times a more, one mortgage entity just does the mortgage. It does a lot. So anyway, I've gone in that round just because to be able to do more because I've had several yeah. situations to where you can help them in one aspect, but there may be one or two more other aspects they need or they, you know, hey, I've got a mountain house over in Tennessee I want to buy or you refinance or at the beach in a different state. And you know, if you're, how it used to be is I could only do loans in Georgia. So that's been a big plus. And then I have a wider net of contacts throughout the country. Mm -hmm. And so we just you know, like this opportunity better just to be able to serve our customers more. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. And we've been trying to get business through John or to John from our agents. Fantastic to work with for sure. Uh, like I said, we will be providing his email address at the end of this. So y'all can get in contact with him via email. Uh, if you need him for any lending services, questions, et cetera. But again, this is something that we are starting. It will be me and John, hopefully at a more coffee shop type setting next time. But this is, you know, version 1.0. So we'll make adjustments and go from there. Get some job. <laughs> I'm not a big coffee drinker, so mine will be like a milkshake with an espresso shot or something. But the name was catchy, Java with John. John, you know, works. But as usual, stay tuned. I will have other videos that don't include John, but you will start seeing John a whole lot more with Java with John. So as usual, thanks for stopping by for living in Athens. Hit subscribe, like, grab John's information, reach out to him on anything you need for lending, and we will see you on the next episode. Thank you very much. Have a great day.